the first person that comes up and offers me $20 is walking away with the car. For the East Coast Lemons Rally for 2017 and 2018, for both years, I got a wagon of sorts that I traded for a six pack of beer. 2017, I pulled a 2000 Subaru Legacy wagon out of a snowbank in northern New Hampshire. And it was rust that was held together by paint. The rear wheel wells were completely gone. The rocker panels were maybe that long on the driver's side and half that on the passenger side. It had 300,000 miles on it. It was leaking every fluid imaginable. A friend of mine had picked up the car in New Hampshire, brought it down to Boston in the parking garage of the Amtrak station because I didn't want to fly up. I wanted to experience pure poverty. <laughs> we started in Moscow, Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Scranton, and went from there up to Buffalo, New York. As we're driving from Buffalo to Pittsburgh, there is just a serious snowstorm that hits to the point where we're doing 40 miles an hour on the highway. I grew up in western Pennsylvania. I learned how to drive in snow, but living in Florida for 10, 12 years at the time, off and on, has taken that away from me. So I was getting reacclimated, and thankfully we had a really good set of all seasons on the car. You know, we had the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive, so I felt pretty bulletproof at that point. Get down to Pittsburgh, alive, check into the hotel. Uh, next morning, we're going through the mountains of West Virginia with the car, and it's performing flawlessly. There's not any issues. This trip took us over the tail of the dragon in February while it was snowing in a car that is barely held together by the roof. <laughs> and this car is just making some horrendous noises. We actually had to stop at one point because we were going across with a group of cars and the car behind us was a Reliant Regal, the next step up from the Reliant Robin. And the throttle hung and the brakes stuck and they weren't able to move because they're 30, 40, 50 year old brake cylinders on these drum brakes. But our, our checkpoints for the day were to stop at six different waffle houses and get two waffles at each waffle house. At the end point in Memphis, we had a waffle eating contest and we had a waffle throwing contest. As much as I love waffle house waffles, I'd rather throw them than eat them. <laughs> that car ran very well. It, it overheated a couple times. It used a quart of oil for every tank of gas. If you got it up over 65, the center diff made a really awesome howler monkey sound. And then the, the rally concluded at uh, the end at, at Barber Motorsports Park. That's where Finnegan and Freiberger auctioned off the missing link. And we enjoyed the race. And, and I took my co-driver for that one to the Atlanta airport. He flew out and I took the car back to Florida, back to, I was living in Daytona at the time got it home and instantly without even cleaning it out threw it up on craigslist and the the ad was 500 dollars or best offer because my thought was the first person that comes up and offers me 20 dollars is walking away with the car so these two kids come over and they're looking at it and they want to do the gambler 500 with it and you know they're kind of telling me about it like yeah you know I, I understand the premise of it having just done the lemons rally with it now, you know it'd be kind of just a, a continuance of the death of this vehicle of its viking funeral and they said well you know how much will you take for it whatever's in your pocket so they empty their pockets they have like 330 dollars he goes will this buy the car i go yes it will <laughs> Handed them the title and they took off. But the highlight of that trip was in Tennessee. We were in nowhere, Tennessee, and we're sitting at a red light and there's a sheriff's car behind us. Now, the car had a 15-day tag from the state of New Hampshire on it. 
and there's a hundred percent possibility that as soon as I accelerate away from here, I'm getting pulled over. Sure enough, made it a quarter mile down the road, lights go on, we pull over, and the sheriff's just sitting there for a minute as I'm watching another Tahoe pull up in front of us. I'm going, okay, they think something's up. <laughs> so he walks over, doesn't even take my information from my hand, just asks me to get out of the car. The license plate was held on the back of the car with 24 hours of lemons duct tape. You know, I explained to him it's a it's a legit tag. It's a 15 day tag from New Hampshire. He goes, oh, okay. He goes, well, let me see your driver's license. I hand it to him. He goes, you're a Florida resident. I go, yes. He goes, you're not a sovereign citizen. I said, no, sir. I'm not a sovereign citizen. He goes, oh. He goes, we we see a lot of vehicles like this in this area with handwritten tags, and we assume that they're sovereign citizens. And he didn't understand how it was legal. But that was my problem because I didn't make it very clear how it was legal. Just because the tag was duct taped to the back of the car. You know, again, I made $200 off the car. And then for the 2018 Lemons Rally, the East Coast Rally, again, I wound up getting a free station wagon that I traded a six pack of beer for. This time it was a little less classy than the Subaru. It was a 95 Ford Escort Sport in teal, because I think that's the only color they ever made them in. And the car originally was on its way to another rally, and the competitors that were driving it hit a deer, and then decided they're just going to go on a vacation instead of going on the rally, because this was just an omen. They got it home, parked it in the backyard, forgot about it. I start looking for a car for the rally in the beginning of 2018. So they pipe up and say, hey, you know, we still have this wagon. Do you want it? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Traded him a six pack of beer for the title. And then in 20 degree weather, painted the car. A couple competitors had went out and bought cans of spray paint. Every day that I came out, this car said something different on it. <laughs> we originally dressed it up like a very cheap hearse through a wooden casket on the roof. We actually had an entire Google Voice account set up for the budget burials. Ran the rally. The car ran perfectly. There, there again, there wasn't an issue with it, except for the fact that you've got 300 pounds of casket and tools up on the roof that increased the body roll of the car tremendously in the aerodynamic drag. We were going up mountains in second gear and just watching the speedo, the speedo fall. <laughs> the midday checkpoint was to do a polar plunge. So January 31st of 2018, I jumped into the Atlantic Ocean. I do not recommend anyone else do that ever again. <laughs> And then we go from Virginia Beach out to Charlotte. And as a, as a NASCAR fan, I travel to Charlotte or Mecca as my people refer to it several times a year. The only thing I can think of coming into it is, well, if we're this close, we've got to stop at Richard Childress Racing. So we stop at Richard Childress Racing and I even had a can of spray paint on me in front of the sign with the museum in the background just spray painted a number three on the door just as my little homage from charlotte we went through tennessee again out to nashville back over the dragon in this escort and the casket on the roof definitely did not help us <laughs> i kind of planned ahead i actually took my my racing helmet with me and I told my co-driver, going across the Dragon, I don't trust the car. I don't trust the road this time of year. Like, I'll drive the car across. If you want to ride with somebody else with a more trustworthy vehicle, you are more than welcome to. And she looked right at me and basically went, Valhalla, we died together. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so we get across the Dragon. The brakes are screaming at us. From Nashville, we went back to Birmingham 
because both years it ended at the Lemons Race at Barber Motorsports Park. I got to talking to a couple of younger guys. They're from Texas, and they've they've done rallies with you know this little Nissan Sentra that they paid a hundred dollars for, and the whole thing is they're not changing the oil until the motor blows, which it finally went a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I'm talking to them and I'm like, I really just, I'm done driving this car. I do not want it. I'm leaving it on the side of the road. I need one of you guys to give me a ride to the Atlanta airport. Like, well, if you're going to Atlanta, like we're going to Atlanta to go to a junkyard to get parts for another car of ours. We'll take this car off your hand. So they show up a little bit later and I had gone to the airport to get a rental car. And they've got the starter out of the car. They've got the radiator, the radiator fan out of the car and have basically rebuilt the cooling system, the starter. Uh, they put a new air filter in it and they're doing a bunch of electrical work to make the car more reliable. And they took the car and got it to College Station and one of the guys actually drives it back and forth to work as of this day. I'd like to thank the guys at Avalon King for supporting the channel this month. If you want to try it out yourself, there's a link in the description below.